Why are we constantly leaving our newborn baby with my sister? Every day, I receive a call from my husband while he's at work. I couldn't help but be surprised at the anger in my usually mild-mannered husband's voice. I quickly clarified the situation to clear up the misunderstanding. Ha, ah, our daughter is sleeping at home, I explained. My husband raised his voice in surprise. One question led to another, and we both were left puzzled. I'll ask my sister-in-law for the truth, I decided. I contacted my sister-in-law, and a shocking truth was revealed. My name is Ruby. I've been married for three years to my husband Tom, who is one year older. We were recently blessed with our first child, our daughter's name is Ivy. Ivy is so adorable, but I'm having a tough time as a first-time mom. Since my parents live far away, I didn't have the option of returning home for childbirth. So, since I was discharged from the hospital, I've been a one-woman show during the day. It wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that I've managed to get by thanks to Tom, who is very attentive to Ivy. Even when he's tired from work, he never complains. Whether Ivy is having trouble falling asleep or waking up crying in the middle of the night, I think the fact that Tom is such a mild-mannered person allows me to deal with Ivy with hardly any stress. I was truly grateful for his presence, so I was taken aback by the sudden call from him and especially by the anger in his voice. Ruby, I just got a call from Mom. What the heck is going on? Ha! Huh? Your mom. What do you mean? What's the idea behind leaving your newborn with Jessica every day? Mom has a bad back, and apparently, Jessica has been taking care of everything all by herself. What? I couldn't keep up with, I said, taken aback by the sudden introduction of my sister-in-law and the word newborn. Jessica is my sister-in-law, Tom's sister. She lives about a 15-minute walk away at her parents' house, where she lives with them. She's flexible because she works from home and takes care of her mother. My husband continued his criticism. How can you just leave a baby who's only three weeks old? I'd be too worried to do that. Jessica has never taken care of a baby. I understand that you're exhausted after giving birth, but at least consult with me before you leave her with Jessica. His English cry made me realize that this was no ordinary situation. Hold on, I have no idea what you're talking about. Jessica is taking care of a newborn. And why did your mom call you? Why do I need to consult with you? What do you mean why you've been leaving Ivy with Jessica? Haven't you? It's been almost two weeks. Jessica hasn't complained because she doesn't want to ruin her relationship with you, but mom couldn't stand it and called me. I was shocked at Pop's words. It was a story I had no memory of because my daughter is right in front of me right now. I had a lot of questions but I felt it. Was more important to clear up the misunderstanding first so I responded. Immediately huh our daughter's sleeping. At home she's right in front of me now. Huh Tom's voice which had been filled. With surprise until a moment ago raised. An astonishment again what do you mean? I'm as baffled as you are in fact I was. Told it's best not to take newborns out. Too much so I haven't really been. Anywhere besides medical checkups so I. Haven't even been to your family home. And I haven't seen Jessica since she. Came to visit us after the birth. Ha huh, then whose baby's Jessica looking? After I wish I knew why would Jessica. Lie about taking care of my baby one. Question just seemed to lead to another. As we both scratched our heads the chime. Announcing the end of the lunch break. Rang over the phone when I heard the. Chime I made a decision I'm going to. Reach out to Jessica I want to. Understand why she might lie if she's. Mistaken and thinks she's taking care of. Her Ivy that's a real problem I'll. Call mom too and uh, uh Tom pause before. Apologizing sorry for doubting you I was. Just so worried about Ivy. 
It's okay your word for Ivy right. Besides when I told you she's right here. You didn't question it you believed me. After ending the call I immediately dialed my sister-in-law's number. Jessica it's been a while do you have a minute there's something I want to ask. Ruby I have something to say to Tom. And Jessica are close in age that's why. Jessica despite my sister-in-law is the same age as me Jessica and I have always gotten along well since I was dating Tom. We even used to go out together so I couldn't help but wonder why she hadn't mentioned anything about the situation. To me I couldn't understand why she would lie like that well this is a good time I just heard from Tom Jessica what do you mean you're looking after Ivy? I've never left Ivy with anyone huh? Following Jessica's surprise voice I could hear a baby crying apparently she is indeed caring for a baby listening to Jessica's voice I had a hunch Jessica wasn't lying she truly believed she was caring for Ivy to clear up Jessica's misunderstanding I started to explain the situation Ivy's right here with me sleeping soundly I really don't understand what's going on but how did you end up with a baby Jessica and why did you think the baby was Ivy? Jessica responded to my question last. Weak dad just dropped a baby off with me. He said Ruby seems to be having a tough time on her own so you should help her. With her baby my father-in-law. I couldn't help but raise my voice at this astonishing revelation then Jessica drops another bombshell. Yeah I was so scared because I've never cared for a baby I hadn't heard anything from you Ruby and when I thought about calling you dad said if you call Ruby she'll just get worked up don't you have any consideration for your sister-in-law. I also have a job to do even when I'm home. It seemed that all of this started with my father-in-law's lie but it wasn't clear who the child my sister-in-law was caring for was. I thought asking my father-in-law would clear things up, so I asked Jessica if he was home. However, it seems he's out right now. Lately, he comes back home in the late evening, picks up the child she's been looking after, saying he's going to return her to Ruby, and then leaves again. And apparently, he comes back in about 20 to 30 minutes. Frustrated that my father-in-law was using me and my daughter to lie, I felt like confronting him directly. I get it. I'll need to talk with Tom, but we might come over tonight, I said and hung up the phone. I emailed my husband about what I heard from his sister. I think it's better to ask dad directly, was the reply. So when Tom got home, we headed over to my in-laws. On the way, Tom shared the conversation he had with his mother. Mom was pretty upset too, to find out that the child she thought was her grandchild wasn't. That's a big shock, ain't it? I didn't think Ivy's first meeting with everyone would be like this. It's complicated. His mother had a bad back, so she hasn't met our daughter yet. I was hoping to introduce Ivy as soon as she was ready to go out, after a month. But instead, I'm upset that we're having to introduce her during such a mess. When we arrived at my in-laws, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law were there, both looking bewildered as we came in. Jessica opened her mouth. Tom, Ruby, Dad said he was going to return the child we've been looking after, but he hasn't come back yet. I understand, Mom, despite the circumstances. This is our daughter Ivy, Pap introduced her daughter and I moved Ivy closer to my mother-in-law. Seeing Ivy, my mother-in-law's face softened. She's adorable. She looks just like Tom when he was born. I'm so glad to finally meet her, and Ruby, you've done so well. I'm sorry you've been caught up in all this. It's okay. I'm just as confused as everyone else, as I said that, Jessica continued. I don't understand it either. Who is this child that has been looking after? 
I don't know why he's lying, and I've been working so hard thinking that child was Ivy. He should consider how I feel too. Like me, Jessica seemed frustrated with her father-in-law. Trying to lighten the mood, Tom interjected, Before that, Jessica, you've met Ivy, you should have noticed it's a different baby. Well, don't all babies look similar? I thought I felt something odd, but I thought maybe their faces change over a few days. Jessica hastily began to defend herself. That's when her father-in-law came back. I'm back. Wait, why are Tom and Ruby here? From our father-in-law's panic, it was clear this whole thing was his lie. The rest of us seemed to agree, and we all gave him hard stares. Unable to stand the tension, our father-in-law started to stumble over his words. Oh, Ruby, it's been a while. What brings you here? Did you leave something here, Jessica? What are you doing? I told you to check for forgotten items. I was furious at our father-in-law for using me and my daughter's names to lie and then blaming Jessica. I subconsciously gripped my daughter tighter. Both my husband and my sister-in-law seemed to feel the same way, their fists shaking with tension. The first to speak was me. Dad, are you seriously saying that? Don't you think it's a bit too shoddy, even for you? What? What do you mean? My father-in-law was taken aback by the anger in my voice. That's when my husband and sister-in-law joined in. Dad, explain yourself. Ruby has never babysat Ivy. Why would you lie like that? There must be a reason for someone to babysit the stranger's newborn, right? That's right. You tricked me into babysitting. Who is that child? I'm scared, even if it's my brother's child, let alone a stranger's. I won't do it again. Do you have any idea how much this has set back my work? With the two of them firing off at high speed, our father-in-law was at a loss for words. While the three of us were glaring at him, wanting to know the truth, my mother-in-law was different. She turned pale, muttering, no way. You're not still involved with her. At my mother-in-law's words, my husband, sister-in-law, and I were stunned. My father-in-law was breaking out in a cold sweat. What? What do you mean? Even though he was trying to play dumb, my usually gentle husband had had enough. Dad, cut the crap. You've been playing dumb this whole time. You think you can get away with this? We know you've been lying about everything. Just tell the truth. Wait, Tom, calm down. Dad, you've been using Ruby and Ivy to cover up your lies, and you owe Jessica an apology. Taking care of a newborn is a big responsibility, even if it's your own child. Imagine how stressful it must have been for Jessica, who's never even raised a child before. Once he started, my husband couldn't stop. Despite everything our father-in-law was saying, my husband didn't let up. Perhaps realizing he couldn't avoid it any longer, my father-in-law said softly, and then he confessed to the unbelievable truth, that child is mine. At her father-in-law's words, my husband lost all of his momentum, his mouth hanging open in shock. Jessica and I were also stunned into silence. The one who broke the silence was my mother-in-law. Her voice was trembling, and her eyes were wet. I knew it. You're still involved with her. I was a fool to forgive you back then, my husband declared. Confused by his statement, our father-in-law's face turned even paler. Ignoring him, my mother-in-law started explaining. He had an affair. It was around the time you two were getting married, so about three years ago. He promised me he would never do it again, so I forgave him. But now, that's why I thought Ivy looked a bit like Tom. She's his blood, after all. I thought she was my real grandchild. Unable to hold back any longer, my mother-in-law started to cry. Seeing her like this, I could feel my anger towards my father-in-law rising. My husband regained his momentum and started to lash out at our father-in-law. You're the worst, Dad. 
You didn't just lie to us, you betrayed mom twice. How could you do such a thing? I can't believe that a person like you is our father. Tom's shout was followed by Jessica. What do you mean by my child? Are you kidding me? You had a child with your mistress and left it with me. I can't believe it. How can you calmly do such a thing? It's too disgusting. I don't want to see your face ever again. Despite the harsh words from his own children, father-in-law just chuckled and said, Calm down. There's nothing we can do about what's already happened. The mistress didn't want to marry me or anything like that. She just didn't have any money, so she had to work. In the meantime, I had to take care of the child. I couldn't bear the sight of my father-in-law laughing and saying these words. Stop it, you worthless man. What you did isn't a laughing matter. A person has been born. Do you understand the gravity of that at your age? When I, who had been silent all along, raised my voice, my father-in-law seemed to lose his footing and fell on his rear end right there. But no one offered to help. Instead, Jessica started hurling insults. You shitty old man. You're no longer our father. I can't stand you, physically. I don't want to see your face ever again. Even when confronted by their words, my father-in-law still tried to brush it off, saying, don't say things like that. Seeing this, my mouth tensed dramatically, and I glared at my father-in-law. I don't have the confidence to keep up with someone like you anymore. Let's get divorced. Wait, didn't you forgive me last time? My father-in-law's artificial smile faded, and his face sagged with wrinkles. The careless demeanor from earlier disappeared, and he suddenly became serious. Sure, I made a mistake by cheating. But if letting off steam outside makes our home peaceful, isn't that a good thing? Besides, how are you going to survive without me? You've always been a housewife. You probably don't have any money, right? As my father-in-law clung to my mother-in-law's feet and said this, I watched him with cold eyes. When I glanced over, my husband and sister-in-law were also giving my father-in-law the same look. Everyone in the room was fed up with him. My sister-in-law shouted out with anger, I'll take care of mom, so we'll be fine without you. How are you planning to live? You've always relied on mom for everything, from meals to laundry. Are you sure you'll be okay on your own now? Jessica's words clearly upset my father-in-law. He looked at my mother-in-law with pleading eyes. You wouldn't abandon me, would you? We've been together for decades. You can't imagine life without me, can you? However, my father-in-law's hopes were quickly dashed. My mother-in-law shook off his arm that was clinging to her leg. Stop joking. How much do you need to belittle people to be satisfied? Who do you think wants to be with a cheater? I'm going to divorce you right now. If you like her so much, why don't you go be with your mistress? What? Wait, let's talk. We can work it out. That woman was just a fling. The only one I love is you, my father-in-law clung to my mother-in-law. Once again, he became the target of my sister-in-law's angry voice. Enough talking to someone who has no intention of reflecting on their actions is pointless. We're leaving this place soon. Of course, mom is coming with us. Until we're gone, dad, you better not come home. I never want to see your face again. Now scram. With that, Jessica tried to forcefully usher my father-in-law outside. Even then, my father-in-law didn't budge, so ultimately Tom had to physically drag him out. Please wait. Give me another chance, just one more, my father-in-law was shouting this until the end, but no one paid any attention. Afterwards, as Jessica had predicted, my father-in-law's life became a mess. Unable to do even basic chores and endure living in his increasingly cluttered and dirty house, he tried to rely on his mistress. But it seemed she turned him away at the door. 
the mistress apparently has no intention of marrying my father-in-law either. Since there was no one left to look after the children, the mistress became unable to go to work, and with no income, she started demanding that my father-in-law compensate for the alimony. Currently, they are even going to court to dispute matters such as child support. Meanwhile, my sister-in-law and mother-in-law moved to an apartment not far from our house. As more than a month has passed since the birth, I've started visiting them with Ivy more frequently. I've continued my friendly relationship with Jessica as if nothing has changed, and my relationship with my mother-in-law is also good. From now on, I plan to do my best to raise my daughter with the help of my husband, my sister-in-law, and my mother-in-law.